Hi guys. All right. Necessity is the mother of invention. So I figured out a way how to not have to hold my phone while I do these. Scotch tape is a great invention. So this is day two of Ethany's 31 days of Tarot. The prompt is the top five decks that I purchased or were, were released in um, 2017. Um, I really didn't buy a lot of decks this year. I bought a lot of Oracle decks. So, um, and then there was one deck that I did buy that was on my wish list for years. So I'm saving that one for another prompt. Although I really want to talk about that one. So, but these are some new decks, some old decks. Uh, the one Kickstarter deck I bought, which is technically kind of cheating because the Kickstarter was in 2016, but I didn't get the deck until 2017. So, um, <clears throat> well, I guess let's get to it. All right. This deck is the last deck that I bought in uh, 2017. Um, I missed the Kickstarter, but I stalked her Facebook page. Um, and she started selling the decks that weren't on Kickstarter. Um, it's Ron and Janet Boyer's The Coffee Tarot. Now, I love coffee. I'm addicted to coffee. It's pretty much all I drink. Um, yeah, I know, not good for you, but pretty much from sunup to sundown, I drink coffee. In fact... I have coffee with me in my husband's Princess Bride because I couldn't find mine cup. So this um, I ordered from her, from her webbook page, came in this really cute coffee handmade bag. Um, these are the backs of the cards, reversible. It's a little bit bigger than what I normally like a deck to be. Um, simply because I have small hands and it's hard for me to shuffle. But this deck is really cute. I love this deck. I um, haven't done much reading with it. I've only had it about a month and I got it in the middle of the move. So um, I've hung out on her Facebook page, done a couple of the um, card combos that are in there. Just show you some of the... now. She doesn't use the standard, um, you know, things. French press, I believe this is the Empress. Um, secret recipe, High Priestess. She's going in the back, you know. The bead curtain is kind of like the two pillars standing next to the Priestess. Um, magic for the Magician. Um, let's see. Caffeine. I'm going to assume this is the devil. <clears throat> like I said, this is a fairly new deck. The Beam, which is the Fool. Um, which I think is kind of cool. I mean, the Fool starting out on his journey. You don't quite know what you're going to be. So, it's pretty much the coffee bean. Are you going to be made into coffee? Are you going to be ground up? Uh, roasted whole? Uh, are you going to be chocolate covered? You know, so this is a fun deck. I'm looking forward to working with this more. Um, definitely going to hang out on the Facebook page more. Um, just so I can learn this deck. Um, coffee is life. At least for me. Okay, so put that one up. Um, now we'll get to the Kickstarter one. Uh, I don't know how I found it. Um... I want to say maybe, definitely not Facebook. Maybe I just went to Kickstarter and typed in Tarot. I don't know. But um, it's The Writer's Block Tarot by um, Vivian Cathy, artwork by Amber Peter. Now this is another one that's not necessarily has standard meanings towards the tarot. It's uh, used to help writers, which I are one. Um, 
basically help you plot your story, that kind of thing. Uh, which I think is really cool. And yeah, you can hear my sons coming up and down the stairs. The thing about this tarot that I like, um, there's the back. It's got a nice back. I do like the simplicity of it. It comes with extra cards, which are always a good thing. Now these cards are like um, the types you can write. Romance, fantasy, get your fingers out, um, horror, sci-fi. She has all the different genres here. And then you have the cards that basically help you plot. Um, it's been a while since I've played with this deck. Um, like the fool is the protagonist. And then you have the um, ace of pins, the, the four of pins. The, it's just a really, really cool deck that nine of keys, pins, um, clocks, pages. It's just really neat and I think I've used it maybe twice to help plot my uh, nano novels. And the cards are kind of have a a sepia tone to them versus the gods. So I guess, you know, this is kind of tarot. That's the way ace conflict 17, which is a uh, major arcana doubt page psychic, you know, you add that to your plot. Um, Six versus time. Eleven, strength. Seven versus nature. So they're all very, very open-ended pictures, which I think leads to the whole writing process. And it's just a really cool deck. Um, I average about a book a year. So, yeah, like I said, I don't do, I don't use them too much. Um, but I just thought it was really cool. And I don't think you could give readings with this. Maybe you could help <clears throat> another writer with it. Um, another really good writing tarot person is Arwen. And um, really like her the Hero's Journey book that she has. So to probably use that this year's Nano with these to plan out my next one. So, wow, I'm talking a lot this time. All right, then this one here. This one I've used several times throughout the year. Um, everybody knows it. It's the Druid Craft Tarot. When I first saw this deck, I didn't like it. Um, I saw the Empress card, which is not that one. That one's just a really cool card. Um, and I didn't realize it was a pregnant woman sitting on a throne. Uh, I thought it was some old fat guy scowling at the camera. I'm like, why would I want this deck? But um, I bought it. I don't know for what reason. I just did. And actually getting this deck in my hands, I was like, oh my God. I finally realized that that the card that was on the cover was actually the Empress, not some fat guy. So I don't know why that image came into my head. And this deck actually houses my tarot crush. As uh, a prompt somewhere that I read somewhere, what's your tarot crush? And my tarot crush is for some reason, actually this guy, the King of Swords. I don't know why. It's just like, I would hang out with this guy. I would let this guy take me to dinner. Um, 
have no clue why, but it's just, that's definitely a mail car that speaks to me. And I just, I just really love this deck. Um, I'm going to trim this deck, um, basically because it's so big. And I just really have a hard time shuffling. I shuffle throw decks like I shuffle, um, you know, re regular playing cards. For me, that's just how I get the best shuffle. So, my husband has offered to trim them for me. He hasn't done it yet, but that's okay. With the move and everything, we've been really busy, and he's just started a new job. So, I remind him once or twice a month, and... Eventually it'll get done. The reason why I'm having my husband do it is because I couldn't cut straight to save my life. Even with one of those like, you know, like strip things that you use. I just can't do it. All right. In 2017 was also a year that Dex came back into my life. So um, I've been re reading Tarot and interested in Tarot. I got my first deck when I was 10. That's a whole nother story. Maybe I'll do one of those vlogs that people are into about it. Um, but it wasn't until I was in my 20s. Well, actually 17. 17, um, I started getting actually into paganism and witchcraft and all that stuff. But when I was 20 and 21, um, me and my husband owned, a, well, we co-owned a little kind of pagan bookstore it was we 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 tried it didn't quite work out but we tried and it was a fun couple of years but um these two decks came into my life about then that was like 1996 1997 uh so i got these these decks then and then uh, a couple years later, the Great Migration happened. That's where I moved from a place where I could be out and proudly pagan into a place where that was probably not the best idea to be. So a lot of this stuff got given away to people in Houston who could use it. So uh, one of the decks that I gave away and I found this year again is the Londa. Tarot. I loved this deck when I got it. Um, this deck was never far from my hands. Um, and I just love this deck. And it has this one card in it. This card is not part of the normal 78. And it says, who are you really? And I just loved the artwork on this deck so much these weird gangly elfin alien looking creatures um in fact for a while there i was almost when i was still in houston looking at tattoo artists to get a tattoo of of this deck and i gave it away simply because I only had enough room to pack me, my husband, and some stuff in our Mustang and drive to where we were going, which was a small, tiny Texas town. And um, so I was just, I mean, I've searched for this deck before, but it's always been a ridiculous price, um, something that I'm just not willing to pay for a deck. And um, I... One of those random searches I do every now and then, you know, just to see how much the deck has gone up in price. I uh, found it on Amazon for something reasonable. And uh, I ordered it. And then I got it. And what I always do with used decks, I immediately count the cards. And I was one card short. Was the Two of Cups. I was crushed. I was like, well, shit. And so I did something I almost never, never do. I wrote the person that sold it. I'm like, I understand that it's probably why the deck was marked down. 
so much that that you know I was able to get it for the price that I was but I wish you would have told me that um, it was missing a card because you know I was pretty disappointed I mean I wasn't angry or anything I was just you know um, thank you for the deck it's in really good condition but I'm really sad that the whole deck isn't there and uh, I got a reply almost immediately back. I am so sorry. Um, we'll look for the card. And um, if we find it, we'll send it to you. And lo and behold, a week later, I got an envelope in the mail with the missing card. So, yeah. That was pretty awesome. I now have the complete Londa Tarot deck back in my hands. Um... It's a pretty stark deck. There's not a lot to the pictures. It's basically the person with one or two things around it. Um, but I really love this deck. It holds a lot of good memories for me from back in the days in my nomad pagan bookstore kind of days. Now this one here, um, bought around the same time. It might have been a little later. Um, I had the big one. came with a huge book and the tarot deck and it was um it's a Llewellyn deck um it's the fairy wicca tarot again not a normal system for tarot uh has a lot of extra cards um it's a lot of them deal with celtic myths it's probably not one that i would use to read for others, unless they were, you know, into Celtic mythology. Um, this is one of the four treasures of Celtic mythology. And there you go. There's the ace. I just really liked the colors. The mythology, the fact that it uses um, crane bag, very important. Um, Celtic mythology uses uh, ogam and uses the symbols. Those are the backs. I didn't show you that. Here, I'll do a better one. There you go. It's an older deck. Um, this is the mini version of it. Not mini cards, just the mini kit. comes with the little book too. I had the large uh, trade paperback looking one. So, yeah. Um, wow, I went on talking a lot longer than I thought I would. Um, I know I said I'd do an introduction this because I didn't and all of you awesome people were doing introductions. Um, this is my first time doing something like this on YouTube. I don't know how it'll work out. Uh, turns out I have a lot of stories to tell, I guess, that maybe I'll start doing vlogs about, you know, me finding my first tarot deck, uh, how I went so deep in the broom closet when I did move to those tiny towns, one in Texas and one in Louisiana, the reasons why, um, the move here, it's changed all that and something kind of wonderful happened. That let me realize that maybe it's okay to do this stuff in public again. But we'll see. So, bye guys. Um, talk to you later.